Welcome to another edition of Inside Medicine. I'm your host, Doug Geinzer, the CEO of Las Vegas Heels, and we're here in the studio today with Dr. David Steinberg from Steinberg Diagnostic Medical Imaging. Uh, for those of you that are new to the show, we broadcast live in the studio here every Thursday at 10 o'clock, and we also broadcast this out on Facebook, YouTube, and all the various channels. And we try to bring in those that are uh, leaders in the healthcare space here in Las Vegas, those that are doing uh, amazing work, bringing in uh, new technology, healthcare education, uh, everything that's making healthcare uh, move, move in the city of Las Vegas. We're going to talk to Dr. David Steinberg today to learn a little bit about Steinberg, Steinberg Diagnostics. Dr. David, welcome to the uh, studio. Thanks, Doug. Thanks so much. It's uh, really a pleasure to be on your show, and I really want to commend you for everything that Las Vegas Heals has really brought to Las Vegas and the medical community. It's really been uh, really a solidifying uh, force in bringing together both uh, the doctors and the hospitals and the healthcare professionals. So, you know, kudos to you and really uh, what you've done to really uh, bring medicine to a forefront and, and to highlight uh, some of the great things that are happening in Las Vegas, particularly in medicine. Thank you. Well, it's pioneers like you that have really brought us to where we are today. Steinberg's been in town for 30 years now. That's uh, pretty amazing. Well, well, actually, even longer. Uh, uh, so I moved here in uh, 1958. I was two years old, so figure it out. Uh, my dad was the first radiologist at Sunrise Hospital. So uh, we, uh, I moved here two years old, didn't have much say in it at that point. But uh, we moved to uh, Las Vegas uh, from Chicago, and my dad uh, was a radiologist uh, in Sunrise, and uh, you know I grew up here, so I'm a long-term native. So you opened up the first uh, standalone diagnostic imaging center in town, right? Yep, we uh, we uh, opened up uh, actually uh, our first uh, center in February 29, 1988, mm -hmm. uh, at where the Valley View uh, uh, Pediatric Medical Center was next to Sunrise Hospital. Interestingly, it was uh, where I, as a kid, went to see my pediatrician. Uh, so we bought that land from uh, actually a couple of pediatricians, Dr. Cap and Dr. Merkin, who own that land. Uh, and we uh, built an imaging center uh, next to uh, Sunrise Hospital. Uh, actually, I was st still working in uh, Washington, D.C. when we started it. I came back here uh, uh, on weekends to work with my dad on f finishing up construction. Uh, GE uh, uh, had a construction division at that time called MedFax, and we built that office. Uh, and uh, we uh, put in one of the first outpatient MRIs. Uh, at that time, you needed a CON, and which is a certificate of need, and nothing was easy. Uh, but we uh, opened up our first MRI uh, there in uh, February 29, 1988, and uh, we just celebrated our 30th uh, anniversary. And it's, uh, as I always tell people, it's been a 30-year overnight success story. I, <laughs> I don't remember much of it other than getting up early and coming home late. And you've got a couple partners in the in the business. So who are your partners? And well, my my dad recently passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, he passed away in January, and obviously he was one of my partners. And then uh, basically my uh, resident and best friend, uh, Dr. Mark Winkler. Uh, he's uh, been with. Uh, we've been good friends since our residency in San Francisco. We met each other uh, the first day of our residency at UC San Francisco, and uh, you know we always talked about doing something together. And when we finished. Uh, he was recruited all over the country because he is really one of the premier MRI guys in the country. Uh, and uh, uh, our friendship uh, uh, basically was the primary reason he moved to Las Vegas. And uh, I think I, uh, he wanted to be a nuclear medicine doctor at one point and not work as hard. And he always blames me that he worked a lot harder than he ever suspected. But, uh, you know, it, it, things worked out great. We're very, very lucky. He has a wonderful family. I have a wonderful family. We, we you know, I raised mine here. He's still raising his here, and uh, and we're still uh, partners. Uh, you know, over thirty years. That's great. It's great to see friends and business together like that. So, lots changed in thirty years. It's gone from analog to digital. Uh, lots happening in the world of mammography. So, tell us a little bit about all of the changes that have occurred. Right. I, the the only thing that's same is it's still called diagnostic radiology. Other than that, everything's changed. Uh, you know, I, when I when Mark and I first started, we dictated into tape. We wrote. Uh, uh, on paper, uh, you know, we have no paper in our offices anymore. We have no tape in our offices. Uh, we, you know, we have digital dictation. We don't, you know, the amount of radiation we use is minimal. We, you know, we had CAT scanners back then, but it took one slice at a time. Now we take basically spiral and multi-slice CT. You know, it took, uh, you know, an hour to take a, an MRI or, and CT back in 1988. Now it takes just a few minutes. 
Uh, you know, everything we do is is on computers. We, if I touch film now, I get an allergic reaction. Uh, it's been so long. So we, everything's on computer. It's uh, it's amazing. I mean, a lot of a lot a lot of things have really progressed. Obviously, you know, when you know, 30 years ago, when we found a breast cancer, I mean, it was almost a death sentence for a woman. Now it's really it's an inconvenience. Uh, we don't really find you know masses in breasts anymore or or cancers. We find really precancers on. on uh, very, very small, just several millimeters on, on 3D mammography. So the treatments have gotten better. The diagnoses have gotten better. Uh, you know, things have obviously got more complicated. Managed care and insurances have made it much more difficult to often for doctors to take care of patients as quickly as we'd like. And hopefully that's something we're still working on. And we've actually, in some ways, we're, we were more efficient before uh, using uh, EHRs or electronic health care records just because uh, – we, we, we could document things quicker and we didn't have to get as many approvals. So, so if, if someone came in and they had a, a problem, we could work on it immediately and didn't have to continuously go back to the insurance companies for prior authorization. So what has 3D imaging done to everything? Because it, it helps you out, it helps the patient out, but uh, that's the, the latest, greatest thing. So what, what has that done to change the well, industry? Well, I can tell you in, in medical school, when, when I went to medical school a long time ago, we learned uh, imaging you know, in multiple planes, or, or we used to dissect a cadaver and you'd see it, you know, in a frontal or, or, or horizontal view or, but now basically because the, the, uh, the power of the computers, we can really look at almost any uh, structure in the body in any angle. So for instance, the aorta, which goes down the center of the body, I mean, it's, it's much better to look at in a sagittal or longitudinal view. It's not, you don't really see it as well in, in an axial view, which is really the way originally where we saw uh, basically CT scans and MRIs. So 3D imaging is, we're, we're really looking at, at structures and also how they interact with other structures. So for many years, we, you know, we would, let's say, look at a bladder tumor, and you would get a slice of the bladder tumor, but you really wouldn't uh, have an idea of how it was affecting, you know, the bladder muscle and the organs adjacent to the bladder. And nowadays, we really can see really almost everything in any plane you want. So you could tell if the tumor is invasive, how invasive. It gives you a, a good idea of how approaching uh, uh, surgically you might want to do it, uh, or even if surgery is necessary. I mean, things have really, uh, I mean, we... We're, we've gotten to the point where we really can find, you know, unbelievable amount of, of disease processes. And really now our problem is really trying to decide what is really important and what's not important. And, and obviously our most important concern is do no harm, which is what we, you know, started with in our Hippocratic Oath when we started, uh, 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 you know, in medical school. Uh, we, you know, we, we find lots of information, particularly radiologists, and some of it's important and some of it's not important. But really, we're trying to cipher out which uh, are the things that we really need to let the referring doctors don't know and the patients know. So the MRI, you, you, you've installed these in all of your, your, your buildings, which you've got several of, and we'll get to that a little bit later on in the show. Uh, but it's quite a process, too. Yeah, you know, it's, I mean, MRI, you know, when we first started uh, moving these magnets around, there were, you know, 64, 65,000 pounds. Now they're they're you know maybe you know eight to ten thousand pounds, so they've gotten much you know lighter. But uh, an MRI, in order for it to work, it has to be in a, a Faraday box, which means that no radio frequency waves can go in or out of the room. Uh, it, you know, it has to be a high-powered magnet, which poses some very significant issues. Uh, but yeah, we have uh, you know we, we have MRIs. Uh, in most of our facilities more than one, so we do lots of MRI and. We have three T MRIs, and we have very wide bore MRIs, and very very powerful gradients that we can do a variety of different t special techniques and imaging. I think we've got a video from uh, one of your your partner, Dr. Winkler. Let's go ahead and throw that up on the screen if we can, Nick. And this is, uh, I think he does a great job of explaining Steinberg, the MRI. The founding partners and managing partners of Steinberg Diagnostic Medical Imaging in Las Vegas, Nevada. SDMI decided to upgrade its MR technology because we want to be the cutting edge outpatient radiology practice in the United States. We wanted to bring brand new 3T technology to this area of Las Vegas, which has no 3T service currently. The primary differentiator between the Toshiba and the other more advanced 3Ts are one, this is the newest generation of technology, and number two, this system is really designed to be super quiet for all sequences, rather than to be quiet for an occasional sequence. That's fantastic. And, and putting these things in, it's no joke. You've 
got to open up the roof, right? Yeah, I mean, most of our, uh, you know, we all our buildings for the most part are one story. Uh, even our newest uh, office, we, we basically put a roof hatch in in a one story area because you're dropping the uh, MRI uh, through the roof. And, and the reason you do that is because uh, the technology changes. Uh, we've, we've changed out in 30 years, we've probably changed out, you know, at least 20 or 30 different magnets. So wow. we do it every couple of years and uh, the magnets become antiquated. Uh, and we put more powerful and, and, and it now more quiet magnets. The uh, MRIs in the past could be very noisy, and we are going to a, uh, a technology where they actually have uh, can uh, wave canceling uh, transfer uh, technology, uh, just kind of like Bose headphones. So you can uh, uh, actually they're quieter and not uh, as claustrophobic and, and, and not as noisy as conventional MRIs. And you're putting these in all your facilities. You just opened up uh, shop number eight, I yep, think, yep. In, in Henderson? Yeah, so we opened up in uh, the Dignity Galleria building across from Henderson Hospital, mm -hmm. our eighth uh, office, uh, SDMI Galleria. Uh, it's really in uh, you know, a very ex rapidly expanding uh, area of town in, in basically you know, uh, the whole Henderson uh, area with the Henderson Hospital and uh, basically Lake Las Vegas and that whole area, which is uh, really growing quickly. Uh, and it's 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 really wonderful, actually. It, uh, there's uh, the opening, and this is uh, my, my dad, uh, who recently passed. He had Alzheimer's disease, and my partner, Dr. Winkler. Uh, but it's a beautiful office. Uh, you know, all our offices. I mean, you know, we 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 want people to come in and know that they're clean and they're state of the art, that they're greeted by a smile. Uh, and you know, our 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 greatest asset, our our you know, we have lots of equipment, but our greatest asset is our employees. And, uh, you know, we, we have beautiful offices and we have, you know, beautiful, caring employees and we have state-of-the-art equipment. So, you know, we're, we, we're very, you know, we're, we're excited when we open up an office and we're very, very proud of our, our newest office. So growing from one to eight in 30 years is tremendous. What does the next 30 years look like? What are the next? Uh, I, uh, uh, well, I'm going to be 62 in uh, August. So if I make it the next 30 years, I'm going to be ecstatic, uh, you know, uh, you know what? We, we do have some more plans. We actually are, are looking at off, opening an office on uh, on Craig and Camino El Norte, and we're doing hopefully a redevelopment project uh, in North Las Vegas. Uh, and, and we have other plans too. I, we're you know we're constantly upgrading our offices. We're adding more equipment. We have uh, extra bays where we can add more MRIs, and we're updating things. We're you know I mean things change. Even the amount of radiation now we're doing pa patients uh, provide uh, for even with X-rays we're changing out all our digital radiography plates so we have less radiation to patients. All our CTs, you know, uh, on a CT that we did you know 10 years ago, uh, it, we're, to, we're, we're, we're our current CTs are basically only providing one tenth of the amount of radiation. So things are changing and we're very much sensitive to you know do no harm. In other words, we really don't want to. Uh, uh, make a diagnosis and expose people to unnecessary radiation. And I think that's a big movement in radiology. Yeah. So for 30 years, your father has been delivering a message that uh, if you practice great medicine, patients will come. And that's been ingrained into the culture of Steinberg Diagnostics. Tell us a little bit more about that and what that means to you. You know, my, you know, I grew up and my dad grew up where basically being a doctor and still is obviously a sacred task in a sacred profession in the sense that, you know, what we're, we're, you know, every job's important, but, you know, we're, we basically, when patients come to us, you know, they want to know if their headache is a tension headache. They want to know if their, their headache is a brain tumor. You know, when a woman comes to us for a mammogram, they want to, she wants to know that she, you know, basically that her, her breasts don't have cancer in them and she's feeling well and, and she doesn't know until we provide that mammogram. And so, you know what, we take our, not job, but our profession very seriously. And, and, and you know what, We're, we want to basically provide great health care and great imaging to our patients. And basically everything else follows from that. So, you know what, when, when, when people call, we want to be sensitive to the fact that, you know what, medicine's confusing and they don't know the difference between a CAT scan and a PET scan and a bone scan. We want to be sure when they're, they're coming to the office that they're greeted with a smile and that the offices are clean and basically the technologist is is answering questions even to when they get a bill we want to be able to provide answers to what's the difference between a copay is and a deductible is because healthcare is confusing and for for us you know we do it every day uh and and it's still confusing uh but 
look at a patient, especially in their time of need. You know, it's not like, you know, when I went to Starbucks this morning, I couldn't, I, mean, I didn't need that, uh, you know, uh, dente cappuccino, but I, uh, but when you, when you have a headache or you have a pain in your stomach or you, you know, or your, or your kid, you know, uh, slid into third base and his knee hurts. I mean, you, you're not going there because you want to be at a doctor's office. You're going there because you need to be. And if that's the case, you know what? This is a time where empathy and sensitivity and caring is really the most important part. And that's part of our job. And, and, and that's what, I, what, what we mean is everything is driven from that. Everything is driven from the fact that we're doctors and that we're providing a, 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 a healing service. And, and, and if you can do that, then hopefully you can basically provide a good care and, and the rest will follow. And that's really what my dad preached and, and what we still preach. Well, it's evident that that culture of caring permeates throughout the entire Steinberg uh, operation. So how many employees do you have? We have a lot. We have, <laughs> uh, we have uh, I think, about 450 employees Oh, my right gosh. Now. That's a big operation. Uh, and then we have uh, about 28 uh, radiologists as well. So... So all in all, we have, uh, you know, we, we have almost 500 employees. And I, I kind of, when I look at the parking lot, I, I, you know, obviously we have lots of cars in the parking lot that are just employees. And so for me, I, every day when I see all those cars, it's a lot of responsibility. But if you think about it, it's not that we're just taking care of the employees and, and providing them jobs. We're also providing, you know, care, medical care for their families. Uh, and, and, and the other thing, too, is we see about, 400,000 patient visits a year. So we're, you know, we, we take care of, you know, SDMI is responsible for a lot of health care for, you know, well over a thousand family members. Uh, and, and, and not only that, but all these family members that come to see us, you know, 400,000 Las Vegas and Clark County or Nevadans come into one of the Steinberg Diagnostic Medical Imaging Center each year uh, for some medically related uh, test. It's great. 450 employees, and it was great before the show. We were talking about uh, dinner with Dr. David. So that's it's a nice touch to be able to spend that type of time with the the employees. They're family to you. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, all I can tell you is that I, you know, for my doctors and a lot of my employees, I've, you know, I, I, I a lot of, you know, some of the employees I had, I've seen as students, and now, uh, you know, one of our our successful students is actually a radiation physicist and actually does radiation physics throughout Las Vegas. Very, very successful uh, guy, Jim Kelly, uh, unbelievable, smart, you know, wonderful guy who basically started, you know, as a nuclear medicine technologist at SDMI and now has his own business. Uh, we've had lots of, uh, of uh, techs that started as x-ray techs that are now MRI techs and basically, you know, quadrupled their salary. Uh, we've got techs that have gone on to into management positions, so they are my family. I've watched their kids grow up. I've watched their uh, uh, watched them grow up. I I don't know if you saw the picture of Dr. Winkler. Uh, he he's he's older than that picture now, <laughs> just as I am. Uh, but you know what? It, you know it's after 30 years you see a lot. I I mean my dad had uh, uh, originally our uh, uh, billing uh, manager who uh, Debbie O'Neill. Uh, started as a darkroom tech for my dad, you know, almost 40 years ago. So, wow. I mean, it, we ha we are, and, and you know what, we're, we're part of the community. I mean, we we're, we're involved in, in local charities. We're involved in local civic service. We participate in you know the Coleman Foundation and 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 CEOs Against Cancer and the Stratosphere Run, and and you know we're we're part of this community, and we're very proud of of being a Las Vegan, and we're very proud of being a Nevada. And uh, and you know we feel very fortunate. We count our blessings every day. We know that uh, we're only as good as uh, we were today, and so we don't take anything for granted. Uh, and it's great. I, your physicians, your doctors are constantly being recognized. There's not a time that I don't open up a magazine and one of them's not winning an award. Uh, Dr. Shaw recently won one of the Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards. You've been a recipient of an Inspired Excellence in Healthcare Awards. Tell us a little bit about the cadre of radiologists that you have and the caliber of uh, folks that you have working for you. You know what? We have great radiologists that are really dedicated to outpatient imaging. Uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, Dr. Shaw, of course, is amazing. She's probably has more experience in 3D mammography, particularly in Las Vegas, than, than anyone. We, we started early as an uh, innovator in 3D mammography. 
uh, as a first generation 3D mammography uh, equipment. And we've actually, in, in 24 months of having the 3D mammography equipment, we're in the process of throwing all the first generation 3D mammography equipment out and replacing it with the second generation mammography. And Dr. Shaw, I mean, early on, she went to France, look at equipment. She went all over the country, look at equipment. And, you know, she's been really uh, in, instrumental in, in our process and our program at SDMI. But, you know, we, we you know, our, you know, we, we, Dr. Wynn just joined us from Memorial Sloan Kettering. She's a, 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 a nuclear medicine doctor specializing in PET, unbelievably talented. Uh, you know, we have, uh, I mean, the, the young doctors that we get now, I mean, I'm glad that I uh, got the job when I did because I'm not sure I would, we'd actually I hired me at this point. They're far smarter than I am and, and far, uh, you know, I mean, the training is unbelievable. And the other thing that's really changed is, is you know when I tr when I trained I'm an interventional radiologist but I really trained as a, a a general radiologist and a general diagnostic radiologist now you know we we have people that just do musculoskeletal we have people that just do radiologists that just do uh, cross sectional imaging we have radiologists that just do neuroradiology we, we we have radiologists that just do women's imaging so real, radiology has really become subspecialized and and all those subspecialties including you know, pediatric radiologists. We have Dr. Ho Wynn, who is a pediatric radiologist at SDMI. So we really have all the different subspecialties of radiology represented at SDMI. Smart, good people that, uh, you know what, I mean, we, you know, we watch, I mean, they, they, they have families that are growing up in Las Vegas and participating in the community and going to school. And, and you know what, it's, it's just a pleasure to see. Growing up in Vegas, you grew up here. Yep. I grew so, up here. and you know, the Steinberg name is well known throughout the entire valley. You've done so much for this community. What was it like growing up in Las Vegas? And what's it like today looking at, you know, when you moved here, there was probably a couple hundred thousand people. Now we have 2.2 million. Uh, what was that like growing up in Vegas? You know, you know what? When I grew up in Las Vegas, we went out in the desert a lot and we, uh, we drove. On, uh, it went, when I grew up, uh, Decatur wasn't paved. Uh, when I was, uh, you know, 15, 16, I used to drive on Decatur as a dirt road. Rainbow, if you went out to Rainbow, Rainbow was, I mean, like dangerous. It was like, I mean, it was way out in the sticks. I mean, so we, I used to go to ghost towns. I used to go, uh, actually I had a good friend named Gary Sharp that we used to explore all different areas of Las Vegas. But, you know, I was, you know, I, I, I like to think of myself not as a nerd, but when I asked my friends back then, I was, I was pretty nerdy. Uh, and, uh, and, and thank God I married my wife and she converted me a little bit to be a little bit less nerdy. But uh, you know what? Growing up in Las Vegas is very different than now. Vegas is a big town now. There's, I mean, there's nothing you can't do here. There's no amount of entertainment. Vegas back then was small. We, you know, we, we, it was a small community. Uh, and, uh, you know, my parents really, my, you know, my dad was from uh, Poland and my mom, not, she grew up actually in New York, but she, she her parents were, were first generation Americans. And, you know, we grew up in a very close-knit family that, uh, you know, basically, I, you know, I got up early every morning so I could see my dad go to work at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I rarely saw my dad uh, at dinner because he didn't get home until after we went to sleep. So, you know, we grew up in a very different environment, very, you know, uh, small-town-ish in some ways and very, you know, European immigrant sort of way. Now our kids obviously grew up in a very different environment. They went you know, to the Meadows and to the uh, Hebrew Academy. And uh, it was, uh, you know, very different. And now it's, it's, I mean, the opportunities now are incredible here. I mean, I mean, the Smith Center, and we just saw Hamilton two nights ago, unbelievable. Uh, I was able to, uh, fortunate enough to go to the second uh, uh, game that was here for the Stanley Cup. I mean, who would have ever imagined, uh, A, that we had a hockey team here, B, that our first year we, we would go to the Stanley Cup. And, uh, and, you know, and, and I, I drive by, uh, you know, the soon-to-be Raiders Stadium. So, you know, it's, it's exciting times in Las Vegas. Go Knights, go. And, exactly. uh, you know, tonight we've got uh, Game 5 or Game 4, right? right? You know, and actually, I was supposed to have a, a CEOs Against Cancer event tonight uh, that we had to cancel because uh, I would have been the only one there in the office <laughs> looking at the uh, uh, TV, watching the game by myself and all the other CEOs, hopefully many of of you are, uh, <laughs> uh, are uh, going to be at the game, but if not, I don't think they'd have been at my event. So you are known in the philanthropic community as well. CEOs Against Cancer is something you're putting a lot of time into. What other groups are you involved with, and you know what what makes you excited to to help out in town? You know what I uh, my wife and uh, when I when my when our kids were in high school, they, she said, 
you know, if you're if you work every day and you're gone at night every night on a different board, uh, you know what, your kids are not going to know you. So I, you know, I, I left a lot of boards when my kids were in, in high school, which is still actually quite a few years ago. But I, I'm on two boards that I, I absolutely love and adore and I'm very, very proud of. I'm on, on the uh, KMA Keep Memory Alive Lou Ruvo Cleveland Clinic Board, which has been really uh, absolutely uh, a delight. Uh, I'm so proud of what we've been able to do. I'm so proud to be uh, you know, on a board uh, that basically Larry Ruvo uh, is chair of. What he's done in Las Vegas has been amazing. Uh, and what Cleveland Clinic has done uh, in Las Vegas has been great. I mean, uh, Jeff Cummings is a good friend of mine. I mean, you know, and 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 Dr. Sabah, the new uh, CEO, is incredible, uh, and he's bringing his wife here, who actually is an internal medicine doctor. Uh, so, I mean, the, the the change in healthcare in Las Vegas has great, gotten great. I mean, the fact, uh, the gravity of what's happened, you know, with the Cleveland Clinic has been able to put us on the map, uh, and 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 things have followed. Obviously, you know, the School of Medicine is incredible, and you know, that is, again, the first year class is just finished. And this, you know, and, and I mean, it's uh, it's really incredible what Dr. Atkinson has been able to do. Uh, but I'm I'm also on the board of Roseman, which is really incredible. They they have a unbelievable educational process here. They have a, a top notch pharmacy school. They have a top notch orthodontia program, a top notch nursing program. Uh, they have a dental program. Uh, and then, and obviously, we're working very hard to start a medical school. I mean, the LCME is make it very, very difficult to uh, get a new medical school off the ground. But you know, we have a facility in in uh, in Summerlin that's second to none. Uh, we uh, have an unbelievable facility. It's in Henderson, where the uh, 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 pharmacy school is now. Uh, I can tell you uh, that uh, you know the the leadership, uh, uh, Renee. Uh, is just doing an unbelievable job there, and and Roseman's incredible. They have a uh, a system of education that really uh, allows uh, students to be successful and to succeed. And uh, you know what? It's a great asset to the community and something not to be underestimated. There's good things to come and continue yep. to come from Roseman. They're great friends of ours. Actually, yeah, we great. just relocated our offices inside of the Roseman University yeah, in Summerlin. So it's a you know what they're. They're innovative and they're sincere and they're and they're I mean and they're hardworking and and you know what uh, we're I'm very good friends with them and I, I I'm very very proud to be on their board as well. We've covered a lot of ground, but the show is coming to an end. Is there anything that we did not talk about that you would like to? No, I just uh, you know what I mean. I mean, I've been here, you know, obviously, you know, I, I've been here a long time in Las Vegas. I mean, I, I count my blessings every day. Uh, you know, I, it's, Las Vegas has been unbelievably uh, uh, generous to, to the Steinberg family and, and particularly to, you know, my family. And you know what? I, I, I don't take anything for granted. Every day at SDMI, you know, what we, we strive to be and, and, and get better. Uh, and you know what? It's, uh, medicine's tough and, and complicated and, you know what? Uh, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we're 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 here for the long run, and you know I hope I can do this for another thirty years. But more imp- importantly, for for me and my family, I just hope to be here thirty. Years. <laughs> That's my goal. Well, I look forward to seeing new Steinberg uh, imaging uh, operations opening up around the valley. I don't think you're done at uh, number nine. It sounds like I think you've got more in the pipeline. Well, uh, we're we'll see. <laughs> we're 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 we're, we're, try- we're working on getting better, and 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 as uh, the need arises. Uh, more so will uh, new and more SDMIs. Yep. Well, thank you for joining us on Inside Medicine. For uh, those of you that ha- did not see the show live, you will be able to catch it on YouTube, uh, on our website, as well as it will be pushed out in the Hills Headlines newsletter. So, again, Dr. David, thank you for joining us on Inside Medicine, uh, and we look forward to seeing everybody next week.